In today's video, we're going to learn how to compare fractions. When comparing fractions, there's a couple things you want to remember. The first thing you should look for is to see if the fractions are already over a common denominator. Most times they won't be, but if they are, it's easy. You just pick the fraction with the larger numerator. If they're not over the same denominator, we have to rename the fractions using a common denominator and then compare the numerators. So let's try number one. As you can see, 1 3rd and 5 6th, those do not have the same denominator, so we're going to have to rename these um, over using a common denominator and then compare the numerators. So the common denominator between 1 3rd and 5 6th is 6, so we can rewrite 1 3rd by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by 2. Remember, whatever you do to the numerator of a fraction, you also have to do to the denominator in order to keep it equal. So when we do this, we get 1 times 2 is 2 on top, and 3 times 2 is 6. Since 5 6 is already over 6, we can just bring it down, 5 6, and now we can compare the numerators. 5 is obviously larger than 2, so 5 6 is larger than 2 6. So that also means that 5 6 is larger than 1 3rd, so 1 3rd is less than 5 6. We can circle 5 6, and that's your answer. Let's try number two. We have 1 fourth and 7 twelfths. The common denominator here is going to be 12. So in order to change the 1 fourth, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. That gives us a 3 on the top over a 12 on the bottom. 7 twelfths is already over 12, so we can bring 7 twelfths down. And again, now it's pretty easy to compare these fractions since they're both over 12 we know that 7 is greater than 3 so 7 twelfths is going to be larger than 3 twelfths which also means that 7 twelfths is larger than 1 fourth put our symbol there circle 7 twelfths now if you notice in these first two fractions another thing you can do is look and realize that 1 third is less than a half and 5 sixths is greater than a half the same in number 2, 1 fourth is less than a half, and 7 twelfths is greater than a half. This can help while doing comparing fractions problems, because if you realize that one fraction is greater than a half and one is less, obviously the fraction that's greater than a half is going to be the larger fraction. It's just a quick kind of shortcut if you realize this, but you can always rename the fractions using a common denominator and compare the numerators, and you'll always get the right answer. So let's try number 3. We have 3 eighths and 5 twelfths. So if we look at this problem, we can see that both 3 eighths and 5 twelfths are less than a half, so we can't use our little shortcut. So we have to find a common denominator. So the common denominator between 3 eighths and 5 twelfths is going to be 24. So we can rewrite this to get 24. We multiply the 3 eighths, the numerator, and the denominator by 3. We get 9 over 24, and then for 5 twelfths, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2, because we want the denominator to be 24. So here, we get 10 over 24. So now, you can see that 10 is greater than 9, so 10 24ths is going to be greater than 9 24ths, which means that 3 eighths is less than 5 twelfths. So we circle 5 twelfths again. Let's try number 4. We have 4 fifths and 8 tenths. So the common denominator here is going to be 10. So in order to rename these fractions, we multiply the 4 fifths, the numerator and the denominator, by 2. And that gives us 8 tenths. And then the other side is already over 10, so we can bring that down. And here, if you notice, 8 tenths is equal to 8 tenths. So we write an equal sign here, which means 4 fifths is equal to 8 tenths. And since they're equal, we don't have to circle either of them. So let's try a couple more problems. If you're feeling confident, you can feel free to pause the video here and follow along with me as I go through the solution. For number 5, we have 1 fourth and 1 third. So 
They don't share a common denominator, so we're going to have to rename these using a common denominator and then compare the numerators. So the common denominator for 1 fourth and 1 third is going to be 12. So in order to rename these for 1 fourth, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. That's going to give us 3 twelfths. And then for 1 third, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 4. And that is going to give us 4 twelfths. So now, when you compare 3 twelfths and 4 twelfths, you can see that 4 twelfths is obviously bigger, which means that 1 third is bigger than 1 fourth. So we're going to write our symbol here, and we can circle 1 third. Now a trick you can do when you have fractions that have a 1 for the numerator, like if you're comparing two fractions, they both have a 1 as a numerator. A quick tip is the fraction with the smaller denominator is always going to be the larger fraction. And this is because if you think about, if you divide something into three equal parts, and you divide that same thing into four equal parts, one of the three equal parts is going to be larger than one of the four equal parts, because there's less of them. This works with any numbers. You think, you know, a half of something, if you divide something in half, that half is going to be larger than if you divide that same thing into fifths, and you take one of those fifths. So if you have fractions with a 1 as the numerator and you're comparing them, the fraction with the smaller denominator is always going to be the larger fraction. Let's try number 6. We have 4 fifths and 5 sixths. So the common denominator here is going to be 30. So in order to rename those, we're going to 4 fifths, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 6. So that gives us 4 times 6 is 24, 5 times 6 is 30, and then for 5, 6, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5, which is going to give us 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 times 6 is 30. So now it's easy to see that 25 thirtieths is greater than 24 thirtieths, which means 4 fifths is less than 5 sixths. So we write our symbol here, circle our 5 sixths. Now a tip or a trick when comparing fractions um, that are one away, where the numerator is one less than the denominator, this time the fraction with the larger denominator is always going to be the larger fraction. And this is because if you think about it, if you divide something into six parts and you have five of them, you're only one-sixth away from a whole. And if you divide something into five parts and you have four of them, you're one-fifth away from a whole. And since a sixth is smaller than a fifth, you're closer to a whole when you're at five-sixths than you are when you're at four-fifths. Don't worry if that isn't initially click with you or make sense, you can always, with each of these types of problems, um, rename them using a common denominator and then compare the numerators. But if that makes sense or if you remember that, this is just a quick way to be able to be confident that uh, the answer you do get is the correct answer. So again, when fractions have a 1 as their numerator, the fraction with the smaller denominator is always going to be larger. And when you're comparing two fractions that are one away, as like, meaning the numerator is one less than the denominator, the fraction with the larger denominator is always going to be the larger fraction. So let's try number seven and eight. So number seven, we have nine twentieths and two fifths. So the common denominator here is going to be 20. So nine twentieths is already there, so we can just Bring that down, we have 9 over 20, and then 2 fifths, to make that over 20, we have to multiply by 4. So we multiply the 2 times 4, and the denominator 5 times 4, which gives us 8 over 20. So as you can see, 9 is greater than 8, so 9 twentieths is greater than 8 twentieths, which means 9 twentieths is greater than two-fifths. Now lastly, let's not try number eight. We have five-eighteenths and one-third. 
So the common denominator between 5 18 and 1 3rd is going to be 18. So we have the 5 18 That doesn't need to change. So we can bring that down. We have 5 over 18. And then 1 3rd, in order to put that over 18, we have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 6. So that's going to give us 6 as the new numerator and 18 as the new denominator. And again, now it's easy to see that 6 is greater than 5, so 6 eighteenths is going to be greater than 5 eighteenths, which means 5 eighteenths is less than 1 third. We can circle our 1 third here. We didn't circle our answer over in number 7, so we circled the 9 twentieths. Um, and that's it for the video today, guys. So hopefully this helped you have a better understanding of how to compare fractions. Thanks for watching.